What's up, guys? We need to understand the NFT situation. I do not understand it fully. And this is why I'm creating this video. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. Like, we'll see what is that about. And we're going to talk about this video right here and see. Like, because, you know, I don't know if you see that. Everything, all the millionaires that, 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 that they become billionaires, they jumped in on the right time. A lot of people are telling us, yo, right now is the best time to jump into the NFT world. We don't know where that world is going to go. For me, this is why I look at the, the world moving forward. The world is going to be totally digital. We, the digital world and the real world is going to be... It's, it, they're going to have transactions. They're going to kind of become similar. Like, I truly believe that. And we're going to create a digital version of ourselves. That, that's that's, this is the world that I'm dreaming of. A world where I have a digital being on a, on online on the internet that goes out and work for me and and does jobs and get paid and bring me the money, you know what I'm saying? I think that's where the world is gonna go, guys. So uh, let's try to understand the NFC. This is the best video I could find online to explain the NFC. The best video for 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 people that don't know nothing about NFT. It's called NFT. They're now selling for huge bucks. Sixty nine million dollars. Oh so what's behind this latest craze? That is the question to ask. Okay, so there's some super strange stuff happening online right now, and I need to tell you about it. First, look at this tweet. The first tweet ever tweeted in the history of Twitter. The tweet was by Jack Dorsey. I'm one of the co-founders of Twitter. And this tweet was somehow just purchased for $2,915,835.47. You serious? And it's not just a tweet. Just last month, a single JPEG sold for... Do, 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 do you guys understand what happened? Okay. So when the company Twitter was founded, Jack Dorsey put out the first tweet. He was the, the founder of Twitter, put out the first tweet. That tweet that was put out to create this big company has, because that's the only one tweet that can be like that, had a value because there's only one tweet like that. So somebody was able to purchase that tweet and it, it, was, it, it became worth like $2 million, that tweet, just that tweet. So on the digital world, you can have ownership of things that cannot be duplicated. It's like amazing. $9 million. Oh my God. The NBA is selling little moments of basketball games for hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is all sorts of digital things that people are purchasing a version of them for lots of money. There are three simple letters that you need to understand to understand what's going on here. Those letters are NFT. What's the latest trend that's sweeping the internet? What exactly is an NFT? Non-fungible token, NFT, non-fungible token, not transferable. You cannot transfer it. That's what the NFT means. But, you know, I don't know where this thing is going to go. So-called NFT. Do all in the chat understand what an NFT is? Like, does that stand for not safe for work? What, is this, what does this mean? Why would you pay for an NFT when you can look at it for free? Is this a gigantic bubble just waiting to burst? I believe in this space with my whole heart. I'm just fascinated by it, all of it. This story is much bigger than a $600,000 cat gif or a $3 million tweet. It's a story about human psychology and how the way we value things is shifting because of technology. A technology that some people think may revolutionize our society while at the same time accelerating the climate disaster. It's really nuts. It's all of these things together and I wanna explain it to you. So let's do this. NFT stands for non-fungible token. Okay, there it is. That's the explanation. Non-fungible token. Makes sense, right? So the video's over now. No. One of my issues with this topic is that people throw around things like blockchain, crypto art, ledger, NFT, and they just expect me to understand what they're talking about, and I, and I didn't. Okay, I'm gonna talk about a Tesla for a second. Customized by Unplugged Performance to be the most unique and high quality Tesla there is. Oh, and it's not just a Tesla, it's also $20,000. You can enter for a chance to win the Tesla and $20,000 by going to omaze.com slash Johnny Harris. Use the word replaceable. 
Non-fungible means non-replaceable. You can't replace it. There's only one of them. It's unique. Non-fungible. Let me give you an example of something I feel very strongly about. Let's say you want to buy an orange jacket. This is really absurd. I've actually never counted these before. Um, Stop it. Get some help. You want to buy an orange jacket from Uniqlo. You go on the internet and a jacket costs $39. If you purchase one of these jackets for $39, you don't care what specific jacket they send to you. They're gonna make thousands of jackets in your size, send them to stores, send them to people, and they will send one to you. You don't care which one it is. The jacket is fungible, it's replaceable. As long as you get one that's identical to the rest, it's worth the same to you, they're interchangeable. However, let's talk about one Uniqlo orange jacket that has been with me for a very long time. This is the original, and for those of you who don't know, I sort of have a strange attachment to this jacket. I just love it, I love the color, I like feel like an identity with this thing. And it's sort of starting to disintegrate, but I love it. And I kind of fell in love. This jacket is not replaceable. If I went onto the website and paid $39 for a Uniqlo orange jacket that was this exact same model, it would not be this jacket. This jacket is non-fungible. It is the only one on the planet that exists it has emotional value, it has significance, it is a very valuable thing because it is scarce, there's only one of them. You guys get it? It's not replaceable, it's not fungible, it's kind of like, a, I don't know, the best way maybe is copyright, it's like you cannot just copy it, like, but it's, it creates, so you know that scarcity, right? The whole thing, this whole thing started with the cryptos, you know that scarcity creates increase the value right so let's say you have the tweet of jack dorsey and you can have it like in a digital way where this is the original tweet of jack dorsey and you own that tweet and all the other tweets are not real this is the real tweet of jack dorsey or whatever the the money that can be given to that is going to be like unbelievable because there's only one tweet that when jack dorsey tweeted that thing it was him that tweeted it it wasn't like somebody else you know what i'm saying so uh when Oh, anything like that, you know? So with the digital world that's going on right now, there's something called the blockchain, which the blockchain makes sure that you cannot copy it or commit fraud. And it's amazing. And that creates, and that increases the value of whatever it is. It's valuable to me at least. And I kind of fell in love. Okay, we can put these down for a second. Everything in our economy is one or the other, fungible or non-fungible. A sack of rice is fungible. You just want a sack of rice. You don't care which one it is. The Mona Lisa, non-fungible. There's only one. Unsurprisingly, non-fungible things are way more valuable than fungible things. So that's the NF in NFT, non-fungible. Now let's talk about the T, which is token. This is a very internet-y word. And to explain this, I have to explain something I have avoided explaining for a very long time. The blockchain. Luckily, there's a way to understand this, and I'm going to make it as painless as possible. Let's say I want to buy three slices of pizza from my friend, Anna. She charges me $6 for these three slices. I don't use cash anymore, so I pull out my debit card, my bank card. And okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into the blockchain in the next video. I'm gonna like, uh, let me see. Ah, no, I, I, think, I think I can keep, I can do it here right now. Let's, let's just keep doing it. Let's go. And I swipe on her little terminal. As soon as I swipe this card, a message is sent to my bank. And it says, hey, Johnny, who has an account at your bank, wants to spend $6 on pizza. And that money needs to go to Anna's bank. This is like the bread and butter of what a bank does all day. They document every transaction that comes in from all their customers. They send out money to the other banks. And at the end of the day, they have a tally of all the money that went out of your account and into your account, and they can give you a number. They can say, based on all of these transactions, you have $50 in your bank account. And so when that request comes in, as I swipe my card, my bank is like, okay, so based on all of your transactions, you have $50 in your account. I can send $6 to Anna's bank, approved, and they approve the transaction. Once that money comes into Anna's bank, Anna's bank is doing the same thing. They're like, oh cool, she had $80 and now she has 86 and they add it to her record. More and more, your money is just a number on a screen. It's 
the result of a bunch of transactions. That yo, this is factual, right? The stuff, the money that you own, everything is in the digital, in the network. You don't see it anymore as before. You don't barter with physical things and you don't use cash as much. So the bank keeping meticulous records of every transaction becomes really important. We trust the bank to do this correctly. So thank you, banks. Banks and other middlemen have been keeping stuff like this running smoothly for centuries. I mean, kind of smoothly. The NASDAQ, everything and more has been the completely worst wiped day on Wall Street. What in the world is happening on Wall Street? There have been a few bumps in the road. With the rise of the internet, people started to wonder, is there a way that we could do this same thing, coordinate this transaction of transfer of money between two people without the bank? The result is a very clever concept called the blockchain. The blockchain fulfills the same thing the bank was doing. But instead of doing this privately on my bank account and talking to Anna's bank, all of the transactions are actually recorded publicly on the internet. That's amazing, right? The blockchain is a ledger that everything's recorded on, on the internet and it's public. So any fraud that occurs, everybody's gonna see what happened. So let's redo this example in a crypto world. Anna charges me six crypto coins for my three slices of pizza. I go to swipe my proverbial bank card to say, yes, I want to pay you six coins. Instead of the bank seeing that request for a transaction and trying to validate it, it goes on to this public record where a bunch of people's computers all around the world are keeping track of every single transaction of everyone always. If I don't indeed have the six coins in my account to pay Anna, all of the people's computers who are keeping track of every single transaction will notice that there's a discrepancy. They'll be like, whoa, 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 dude, you don't have six coins. We're looking at every transaction ever and you don't have six coins. Your transaction is rejected. If I do have six coins, all of the computers looking at the public record will see that request for a transaction and they'll be like, yep, approved. You have six coins and now Anna has six coins and they'll write that transaction into the public record. Now Anna having those six extra coins is now the business of everybody. Everybody now knows that. The point here is that the group verifies the legitimacy of every transaction by keeping an eye on every transaction to make sure that it adds up. Okay, I'm getting hot at this point, so I'm taking off my orange jacket. Okay, so you're wondering, what does the blockchain and this public record have anything to do with cat gifts that sell for $600,000? Well, I'm about to tell you. So in my pizza example, we talked about blockchain as a way to verify currency transaction. I pay you this much, you pay me this much, and everybody knows how much everybody has because it's all public. But this is where it starts to bend my mind a little bit. What if we apply this to something that isn't money or currency? Let's say one day you're just looking at the ledger and the ledger is like, Johnny wants to give Anna six coins. Okay, he's got six coins approved. And then a transaction comes up that's like, a Malaysian businessman wants to give $3 million worth of coins to Jack Dorsey in exchange for a little token or digital certificate that says that the tweet is now somehow owned by the Malaysian businessman. The only thing that the blockchain cares about is does the Malaysian businessman have $3 million worth of coins? And so a bunch of computers all around the world look at the whole entire list of transactions and say like, yeah, this guy has more than $3 million worth of coins. Approved. They approve the transaction. And now it is written in a public record that is unalterable that says that this Malaysian businessman owns this tweet. The token has been transferred to somebody new. Non-fungible token, NFT. And if there's anything that gets human psychology to value something, it's if an entire group validates that it's real and that there's only one of them. There are tens of thousands of NFTs of all kinds. Some music is being given tokens. Lots of art is being minted as tokens and being bought and sold. And then of course there's uh, NBA Top Shot who's taking advantage of this. These highlight moments, these Top Shot moments from your favorite NBA players have been turned into non-fungible tokens. Jesse made headlines the other day when he paid $208,000 for LeBron James Top Shot. Uh, it's the weirdest thing. As soon as humans have enough abundance and have their basic needs met, 
food, shelter, warmth, etc. The next frontier is to create value in things that have no inherent value. The value turns into psychological hype, excitement around a certain thing. We've been doing that forever. I mean, that's the whole art industry is based on the idea of a bunch of people deciding that this painting, this little bit of canvas and wood and paint is valuable and thus it is valuable. The only difference about now is we now have the technology to do this in a non-physical way using this very sophisticated internet technology that is maturing very quickly. Okay, so this is a lot of hype and I know you're probably thinking like, cool, there's a bunch of rich people online buying and trading digital art and there's millions of dollars worth of cards. I thought you said that this was gonna have the potential to change the world and I'm getting there, but first I need to talk about the crazy flip side to the NFT fad. The reality is that the technology that is the backbone for all of this, the, the blockchain stuff that we've been talking about, relies on the public ledger thing that I talked about. Like that is the sort of heart and soul conceptually, but mechanically, like physically, what it relies on is computers doing a bunch of little calculations all day and night forever. These computers aren't real computers. They don't have any memory or screens or anything. They, all they do is just make little micro calculations all day, all night. Most NFTs are stored on a blockchain called Ethereum. And as of now, in early April 2021, when I'm filming this, the Ethereum blockchain is using 33 terawatt hours of electricity. And you're like, what's a terawatt hour of electricity? That's the same amount of power as the country of Serbia. A reminder that generating electricity usually comes from power plants that are burning fossil fuels, that are putting carbon into the atmosphere, which is a big freaking problem. Okay, I'm gonna stop it here. Guys, there's always a negative in every positive and we need to think about this, the environment. Um, so that's the problem. The mining, the, the, all those mining of, uh, of cryptos or like this whole thing about the blockchain calculating, keeping track of the ledger require a lot of computer power and that computer power uses a lot of electricity and in order to create electricity we use fossil fuels and, and a lot of things that goes back into the atmosphere so maybe we need to find a, a, a energy efficient way to 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 create electricity we need electricity in the world i don't know which way we need another way i wish we could create electricity with water just water i don't know but that's why i wanted to keep you i'm going to keep uh writing more videos about this and we can talk about this more. Thank you guys. Subscribe to my channel. We, we need to understand the the uh, uh, everything about NFCs, like, you know, so that we can make wise decisions. We're going to, you know, and I'm going to be talking to, I'm going to see if I can be talking to like a couple of NFT experts so I can bring it to you guys. Thank you.